Welcome back to Murray's Minis. I'm Will, and today we're going to be talking about how to sculpt capes onto your marvellous miniatures. In today's video, we are going to cover the tools and techniques that I use for sculpting capes. Now, this is one of my most favourite little bits of detail that you can add to models, especially Space Marines, because let's face it, Space Marines look so much better with a flowing cape. That's just the law. They look better, hands down. So we'll talk about sort of the tools and the techniques that I use. This is actually a very simple technique to use. It looks really daunting when you first give it a go because it looks quite complicated, but actually it's one of the most intuitive and relaxing techniques to use when you know what you're doing. If you follow a couple of simple steps, it, you just follow where the folds of the cape are that, that you've already created and you just accentuate those details. It's a beautiful technique that is so relaxing when you get it right. First thing you're gonna need is a marvelous miniature to sculpt your cape onto. You're also going to be needing a hobby knife, make sure the blade is nice and sharp, some clay shapers, different sizes and different toughnesses uh, are a good idea. You're also going to need your putties, obviously, because you're not going to be able to sculpt without it. And you're also going to need a acrylic rolling pin. You can just use a plastic rolling pin. I prefer to use this one because it doesn't texture the surface of the putty when we're rolling it out. That's something that you do have to be mindful of. Not so much with this project because we were gonna be sculpting levers, which are gonna be a little patterned, a little bit more rougher. But when you're doing sort of like flowing capes or something more along the lines of Black Templar's robes, then you're gonna be wanting the texture to be nice and smooth and soft. Another tool which is really, really good is Vaseline. This is Fancy Sculptors Vaseline from Green Stuff World. My advice would be just get cheap Vaseline. It's the exact same stuff and it's not gonna make that much of a difference. Make sure to give your putty a good mix because you want it to have an even consistency across the whole lot. You don't want there to be uh, any differences in color across the whole lot. So we're gonna be rolling it flat and kneading it. So we're gonna need a surface that isn't gonna have a lot of resistance. So Vaseline, the area where you're gonna be kneading it down, you're also gonna to wanna to Vaseline all of your tools just so there isn't any stickiness and you don't accidentally take off the cape that you're sculpting before you get a chance to add any detail. Now with this particular project, it was gonna be rough and ready. I'm not working to any pattern or stencil because I wanted every member of this kill team to look unique, down to their capes, cloths and stuff. All of the shapes are different. Now with certain projects, if you want it to be uniform, it's worth just drawing yourself out a little stencil and working to that stencil. But in this case, I was just gonna go rough and ready. So I've laid it down onto the model and now we're just gonna work it to the contours of the model because when you're sculpting these types of capes on an already sculpted model, you just want your first underpinning layer to flow and wrap around the model that you have. This is the beauty of this technique, is that the model will tell you where the folds are. You just put them down and you accentuate it a bit, you get it to fit and wrap around the model but it's the model itself that is telling you where all of these folds and where these intricate bits of detail are gonna be. So with this particular technique, I was gonna go with multiple pieces of leather. Rather than one big flowing cape, I wanted there to be at least one or two different pieces of material. Now this is a technique that I've used before and it's something that I really like. For one, it makes it a bit easier. If you've got one big long flowing cape, it can be difficult to get uniformed and interesting folds. 
But if you're slapping on multiple bits of um, putty to form multiple bits of cloth, it actually makes it a little bit easier for you. It takes some of the hard work out and you can create a little bit more visual interest with it, with how two or three different pieces of material are gonna interact together. But you do have to be a little bit careful during this stage, because you don't wanna accidentally blend uh, those two pieces of cloth together, because you might as well just slap down one piece of cloth, rather than going to the effort of uh, cutting out two. The thickness of your cloth is down to you. I tend to keep the thickness to about one, 1.5 mil or thereabouts. But if you're gonna go for something heavier, uh, there's, there's nothing wrong with uh, rolling it down a little bit harder and going for a, um, either a thinner or a thicker material. It's just gonna be down to what type of material you want to sculpt. If you want something that's gonna be light and very, very breezy, you're probably worth going on going for a bit thinner. If you want something a bit sturdier, roll it thicker. We should talk about putties. So I use a blend of Milliput and green stuff. Now you can use either or, you can use completely different epoxy putties, but mixing these two is my absolute favorite for sculpting for a number of reasons. Green stuff is really good at being flexible and sticky. So it really sticks down to your model really nicely. Once it's on there, when you're sculpting, it's kind of, it's quite difficult for that to come off. This stuff is like sculpting with clay. It's water soluble and it's smooth. It gives a really, really nice finish and there's no shrinkage but it's brittle. It's tough, but brittle. When you mix the two together, you get the absolute best out of both of these materials. You end up with something that is both flexible, but strong. Rock hard, but has enough give in it that if it takes a knock, it's not gonna break off. And it's sticky, but not so much so that it sticks to all of your tools. So a quick word on mixtures. now. There isn't really a right mixture, yeah? I tend to go with round about 50-50 of each. Most of the time I tend to push it to more milliput than green stuff because I prefer the texture and the feel of milliput to green stuff. But if you're sculpting yourself, the only advice I'll really give you is the mixture is down to your personal choice, yeah? It's up to you and what you feel comfortable with sculpting and what flows with your process. But the best thing you can do is just experiment. So let's get cracking. Now that the base layer of the cape has had about 24 hours to cure, we're gonna start adding the individual folds in. Now, because this is a milliput and green stuff blend, it probably will settle in about three hours if you're impatient. I gave it 24 hours just to harden down, just so that way it was a little bit firmer and didn't break off of the model. You can always just take the underpinning off and then just get a little bit of super glue. Actually, so most of the time it is worth doing because uh, it just saves you that cape coming off during your painting. So what I'm doing here is that I'm taking little bits and bobs of putty and I'm looking where the existing folds are. So where we've formed the base layer of the cape around our model will tell us where the folds will be and where the best place to put these folds is. So this is one of the beautiful things about this technique is, is that actually it doesn't take as much brain power as you would think. You just look for where you think a fold should be because of the contours of the underlayer and you start adding bits of putty to it. Now you can go for larger pieces of putty or smaller pieces of putty. It depends on the fold and the effect and the weight of the material that you are trying to sculpt. So this material is gonna be leather, so it's gonna be quite hard. So in this case, specifically on this piece, I've gone for quite a big piece of putty, but I'm forming it quite flat because I don't want there to be big folds within it. I want there to be weight to this particular bit of material. So you can keep on just adding, looking for areas where you think there would be folds or where it would just look good 
um, where is the visual interest in what you're doing. So a word on the techniques used for smoothing it out. Essentially, all you're doing is you're just going to take multiple passes, doing it quite gently. Clay shapers are a very, very forgiving tool to use. And I would advise using clay shapers over metal sculpting tools. There are plenty of people that use them. I have never found much luck using them. I always find them really, really difficult to use, um, especially with something that has milliput in it because it's so much more softer than green stuff. Using green stuff, I think metal tools are actually quite useful, but I much, much prefer clay shapers, especially the softer ones, because you get much more give in the actual tool. And when you put a depression in, it doesn't completely muller it. You actually have a little bit of leeway with how much pressure you are actually applying. Now, when you're molding putty, you need to be aware of whenever you depress it, it will push it in the opposite direction. So you'll find what you do is that you push on one side and then you push on the other to counteract the movement and the depression that you've already made. And that's just the process of it. Now, this might sound silly, but working with putty and doing capes is more about your mindset. And I know it sounds silly, but don't be afraid of the material. Don't be afraid of indenting. Just try to dig into it, try to make as many pushes and pulls and just get a feel for what you're doing. If you're too hesitant to make depressions, and start carving in that detail, it will take you a very, very long time, not, not only to achieve the effect, but it will give you a long time to get an appreciation for where your headspace needs to be to do this sort of technique. Because you're trying to create flowing patterns. You're not trying to be precise. What you're trying to do is create something organic, which can be very, very difficult because we naturally want to create patterns. That's just something that humans do. We can't help it. When we think we're being random, actually we're not. <laughs> um, we always unintentionally create patterns. But with this, you just want to let the process flow and kind of take your head out of it. Just build up your layers gently and slowly and let the shapes form. It's more about adding and adding to what's already there than making something new. That's what's so good about making uh, these capes with this technique is that you are just accentuating what's already there rather than creating something uh, from the ground up. When it comes to the individual folds, how much material you put in is kind of down to the impression that you want to make. So, if you go for something that's got kind of a high peak, that's gonna indicate more movement. If you put down a lot of material, but you don't create a high peak, that's gonna create a kind of a, a flowing fold, but that doesn't give the impression of a lot of movement. You can put down a relatively small amount of material, but with a high peak. Think of it like you're just making a little peak of a row of mountains. If you've stuck down a bit and you've got a high peak, you're indicating a lot more flow and movement. Now, this is a trick that I picked up um, from not just Mecca um, on how to smooth down milliput. So this is isopropyl alcohol. Uh, I think it's about 45%, you can get 99%. With this technique, it doesn't matter that much. Now, this will dissolve and mix into the milliput because it's water soluble and all I'm doing now is that I'm just smoothing down all of the layers so this is a really quick way of smoothing down normally you would have to spend ages with your clay shapers uh, gently smoothing it down making sure that all of your areas are nice and clean 
with this, you just get the isopropanol alcohol on and you smooth it down with your brush and it makes things so much quicker, so much easier and it makes those folds look really natural and organic. It's such a, a nice little technique that makes things really simple. It's, it's worth having in your toolbox for this type of um, sculpting work. So you can see here on this particular occasion, I'm adding a lot of material. So this is a fold that's starting with the backpack. So I was thinking with this particular one, it should be kind of creased up a little bit more. So the peak on this particular fold is much, much higher. So that gives the indication that this material is sort of scrunched up. Because I've put a lot of material down, it's gonna take a fair bit more effort to get it to smooth down and to look natural. But what I'm doing as well is that I'm putting a peak into the middle. So I'm kind of slicing down the center of all of that extra material that I've put down. And you can absolutely do that and it helps to create a little bit more of a dramatic flow and feel, especially where you've got scrunched up material it really helps it kind of have that sort of dramatic looking fold to it. And at this point, I start to use the isopropanol a little bit more because it really helps to kind of dissolve and smooth down the folds. It's a very, very useful trick. And then I'll just go back in with my clay shaper. Uh, you can always make sure that you're lubricating your tools. So make sure you've got Vaseline on your clay shapers. Your clay shapers won't tend to stick that much. They're very, very good at not sticking, but you still need a little bit of lubrication on there or otherwise it will start to stick and you'll start to pull the material off of the model, which is not what you're really looking for here. The nuts and bolts of this technique really is, is just you're adding fold by fold to the actual cape and you can absolutely connect different parts with different layers of material. If a fold isn't looking right or it just isn't looking dramatic enough, you can always just add more material either on top of it or further up or down and then just smooth in into it. So I think at this point I'd made another ball of putty because when you mix in milliput, the drying time, curing time, is actually pretty quick. You've got about an hour's decent work time, probably about 45 minutes realistically, before it starts to harden and your blending becomes really difficult and tough to achieve. So you're best off making small amounts of your putty because you don't want to make massive blobs, it all cures and then you're wasting putty. Do small bits, small blobs, and then you're not gonna waste as much, and your big tubes of uh, milliput and green stuff are gonna last you a long time. So just use what you think you're gonna need, and then half it, because you're always actually gonna need less than you think you do. That's just how these things work. Go in, just adding fold by fold, smoothing it down, and it will start to come to life very, very quickly. It's always useful to look at some references. Everyone's got models that have got capes on them. I would advise with this type of sculpting to look at older models. Older GEW models are really, really good because of this was how they used to sculpt capes. Now with digital sculpting, you're not gonna be really able to achieve a lot of the stuff that they do because it was rendered in a computer I actually prefer the older style. There's something about a hand sculpted cape that I think just flows and looks really nice. It's true you can't get the same sorts of folds and sort of dramatic looking folded capes that uh, G GW can get now and a lot of other miniature companies, but there's just something about a sculpted cape that I think just looks really charming. I'm using a fair bit more isopropanol now than I was before, to be honest. I'm kind of a convert to this technique, but you do have to be careful with overdoing it because you will just get bits of material that will kind of come off 
and just be all over your cape. So you do need to kind of wash it off or otherwise you end up with a very gritty texture, which isn't exactly ideal. But just build up your layers little by little bit. Don't be afraid to cut bits of your fresh material. If it's not working and it just doesn't look right, just get your hobby knife and cut off the excess. There's nothing wrong with taking bits off and having a bit of a fresh start if a particular fold just doesn't look right to you. Just cut it off, start again, you've got time. Especially with your first one. Your first one probably isn't gonna look the way you envisioned it to, but to be honest, whenever I start one of these capes, it never looks like how I thought it was going to. It's a really organic and natural process and I can plan for it, but it's going to look completely different because once you stick your putty down, you will find that it, the cape looks better and flows differently from how you the picture. It's a very organic and free moving material. Make sure you always clean it down. The plus sides of using the ice approach now as well, it will smooth down your blends as well. do your blends and once it's cured you will find that there's a big old gap or a big old crease somewhere and it's really really important. but there's nothing stopping you from going back up after it's all, all cured and adding a little bit more material just to smooth out your blends. If you want really really smooth blends make sure you push more towards millipart then you do green stuff. I find it really difficult to get smooth, natural looking blends with green stuff. Millipart, neat millipart can be really fun to sculpt with because although it's much, much softer, you have to be a lot more delicate with your depressions and your applications of your clay shapers, but you can get wonderful, smooth flowing blends with it. It's really good. I would suggest trying out sculpting just with millipart as well and with green stuff just so you can get an idea of how the material behaves. Find out which material you prefer to work with because each material has got its own properties, its own benefits, its own downsides, but ultimately it's down to you and your own personal preference what material works for you and the style that you want to create these capes with. And actually, these are sort of universal principles with sculpting, whether that be capes, faces, or like bags, or little pouches. All of these kind of follow the same sort of principles, and materials is a very personal choice. So just experiment with different materials, and there's nothing wrong with uh, being a fanboy of green stuff, or being a fanboy of military. As long as it's the material that you enjoy with working with the most, absolutely use it and don't let anyone tell you you're wrong because it's just your own personal preference. There you go guys, that's how to sculpt capes onto your miniatures. Give this technique a go. Um, I messed it up so many times my fir first time. Don't be afraid to mess up, that's how you're going to learn and that's how you're going to get good at sculpting capes. If you have any questions or problems, just drop a comment below. Feel free to uh, like and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support us further, then consider supporting us on Patreon. Cheers, guys. We'll see you on the next one for part three of the Space Wolf slash Wolf Spear uh, kill team when I actually get round to getting the decals and painting the models. Right. Catch you on the next one, guys.